Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, Need Software, to 323-405-1341. That's 323-405-1341. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. So I see that somebody uh, asked a question, who is speaking on immigrant blacks? Oh, so reparations is for blacks who descended from American slaves. But we, you, like, like I wanna, okay. Yeah, no, 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 I, 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 I want to cut you off. Go ahead, say what you're going to say. And then I want to kind of speak on right, right, that right. whole thing because right. I think right. it's big. But come on, we have to be real, all right? Yes reparations is for blacks who descended from american slaves in america but we also have to make this a worldwide movement we can't just be the only group of people trying to get reparations in this country right now there are legal qualifications right you got you have to take your reparations movement to your own government but as a representative of black people i'm going yes i, I want to represent for other black people as well I, i'm not only going to represent for only blacks who descended from american slaves i have a constituency that i have to uphold i have to uphold everybody's constitutional rights right this is for about you know so but no i'm not going to give your reparations to a person who does not qualify for this country but if i become president you better believe i'm going to or Congress and get and get other people in Congress as well. Trust me, there are going to be legislations passed for blacks who became American. Now, I'm not for the illegal thing, the illegal, the illegal immigration. I'm not down with that. Okay, you gotta do your paperwork and become a citizen. But if you are black from any anywhere, okay, Africa, uh, Jamaica, Haiti, wherever you're at, right? I'm not going to discriminate against you because you're not of my tribe but however look the other groups have to do the same thing in their land all right if if, if we're going to get reparations you have to be bold enough like we are bold enough to take that with your government okay you, you have to be bold enough because you're going to have people like myself putting myself on the line for all blacks in america and i say that unapologetically all blacks in america but there are certain policies for certain people, right? Because let's let's be real, okay? Um, you don't want to be the only blacks in the world fighting for reparations. Because guess what? The whites in America, the whites in Great Britain, the whites in France, they're gonna all team up to make sure that don't happen. Even if if Great Britain have to help the United States, even if France have to help the U.S. Even if Italy have to help the U.S., they're going to all get together to make sure that white supremacy stay existing. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. But you have a question? No, I, I want to interject. I just want to. OK, so I believe there's degrees to everything. You know what I mean? There's first degree murder, second degree murder, third degree. There's manslaughter. There's there's levels to everything, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like when it comes to reparations, mm -hmm. there almost should be different degrees to the reparations. But I don't think reparations should stop just at the defendants of slavery. Hear me out. I think that's where it starts. And if you can prove that your family goes that far back, more power to you and you probably should get more money but here's the thing like for instance on my father's side my grandfather my great great grandfather came through ellis island in the 1920s right. okay to this country meaning right. he our family lived through jim crow we lived through redlining 
Right. We live through just being niggas right. in America. Right. And the bullshit that that entails, the money that we should be owed for that, not just slavery. Mm. The, 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 the fact that motherfuckers could have went to war, come home and couldn't um, benefit from the GI Bill and all that type of shit. That happened to not just defendants, a descendants of slavery. Mm-hmm. These are people that came to this country and and got treated like they've been here since slavery. Right. They they can't get nothing to. You see what I'm saying? And I feel mm-hmm. like if you would include these people, maybe they're not going to get as much as you. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then what do you do because my mother is apparently my mother's family is can be um traced back to slavery. So I have right. one side of my family that's traced back to slavery. And then the other side that came here very early. How do we equate those type of people? Um, right. And again, I feel like if if we found a way to include all black people who've been just suffering from racism, just yeah. the racism of America, um, right. to where yeah, I mean, you might not could trace your shit back to 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 to, right. to to slavery, but if you've suffered racism here in America, you know, you can get broke off a little something too. I bet you if you told motherfuckers that, you'd have a whole more uh swell of people supporting mm-hmm. the idea. But it but well, it's almost starting yeah. to turn into like an elitism. Well, I'm a FBA, I'm an ADOS, and it, you know, if you're not that, then you're not getting anything. Like, you know, you know, like yeah, we're let's right. not turn it into that type of reverse right. elitism either. Right. Well, we have to be be honest if we're going to get into politics, and um, and the reason why um now I do believe that we should only give reparations to blacks who descended from American slaves. But I think the representation, black people as a whole get mistreated in this country. So if, if there, if there is any type of mistreatment, there are, there are going to be policies specifically for those people as well. And, you know, the redlining, for instance, you don't think that's something that they owe us? Like They stopped us from being able to have generational wealth by keeping us out of certain neighborhoods and being able to use real estate as a form of generational wealth the same way they did. You don't think that. And, you know, that all the black people that 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 may have happened to, whether they were defend descendants of slavery or not, deserve. Yeah, yeah. uh, yeah, Prepare to be whole for that. Yeah. Red red lining came. We need to look. uh, I think reparations needs to expand, maybe. Yeah, the well, idea of what it is, right? Right, no, right. No. Like, well, well, you know, like, like with the redlining, um, that came during the Franklin Delano Roosevelt era. So that was like in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, that's uh, a long time black, ago. <laughs> black black immigrants didn't really get here until like the 19 late ni- late 1950s and 60s. So. So, I told you my great grandfather came here in the twenties. Okay, yeah, no, 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 not not all of them. No, 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 I'm not saying every single one, but as a when they started popping up as a mass, you know, what I'm saying, um, um, then uh, yeah, you know, what I'm saying that's when it was like in the 19 late 50s, early 60s, around that time, and uh, blacks who descended from American slaves actually fought for them to be able to get here because. A lot of them wasn't allowed here, you know, and it was unfortunate. But and that's 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 what I'm even till this day, like Joe Biden saying that would dilute the claim. and Huh? See, they just scared to ask for it all. But OK, it's OK. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, I would like to say this, though. I want American. them to pay for it all. Slavery, right. all of the shit that they right. fucking did. Put, disproportionately right. putting us in jails, all right. of that fucking shit. Not right. just slavery, but okay, I want to start there. That's fine. That's right. Fine. No, no, yeah, no, I no, no, no. Trust me, like, like, if, you, if you put anything in right. into it, right. That oh, the white man's gonna say no. Don't 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 rock the boat. Don't put nothing else on to it. Oh like, I'm like, fuck that, put it all I'm, on me. I'm glad you mentioned that, man. Uh, uh uh a lot of times we have too many of our people who think that they can actually um put pressure on Democrats to give us reparations. That's <laughs> nice. You could put pressure on them, but they would rather, they will 
allow this country to burn down before they ever give the keys to their power. And if we're going to repair the damage, thank you, you know, Isis Harrison. They, they created this country and they deliberately keep us at the bottom of society because they cannot um capital capitalism white supremacist capitalism don't work without somebody being at the bottom so they chose us for that position so you're not going to be able to convince joe biden to give you reparations now what he'll do is he'll go through the motions like he's going to give you reparations just to buy time to keep to keep putting people in there in place who he wants in there. But Joe Biden would never give us reparations. Bernie Sanders would never give us, no, it is a it is a conflict of interest. Reparations is a conflict of interest for white politics, okay? So the only way that we're gonna ever get reparations is if we have our own people representing that, people like myself. And I, I wrote some down and um, I just want to read it just right quick. Uh, uh, we have to change the culture of how we do black politics. First, we have to get rid of gatekeepers. Everyone should be their own gatekeeper and everybody should have black agenda policies as a priority in their gatekeeping. Be cautious of anyone trying to be the gatekeeper of the black vote. A sincere person understands that it is not in the best interest of black people for one or a handful of people to have total control of the black vote. Sincere people understand this because it would make it easy for the opposition to destroy those few individuals and everything else will follow. Sincere people understand that we shall only vote based on the codification of a black agenda. Everyone should be their own gatekeeper and the only gate that we shall all keep is a black agenda. And right now, the agenda is reparations. People who are not sincere will try, to, will try to control the black vote for their own personal benefits. There are goodies given to people who have the ability to control the masses of black people. And many people aspire for that position. Be mindful of people who always have something negative to say about black politics without offering a solution. You have the right to vote or not vote. But always remember that there is always someone out there worth voting for. Number two, you should never wait until November to cast in your ballot. The mm -hmm. reason why is because you missed all of the grassroots candidates like myself by that time. If you waited until November will mean that you did not vote in the primaries, which means mm -hmm. that you did not vote for a grassroots black agenda priority candidate. So you cannot say that there is nobody to vote for. When you never in your life looked in a voter's information guide, you cannot say that there is nobody to vote for when you only vote for red or blue presidential nominees in November. You cannot say that there is nobody to vote for when you never look at your secretary of state's website for candidate lists. So many grassroots candidates fall off because of this mentality. If we are not going to step up in politics ourselves, then we have a responsibility to vote for the people who are. When you step up for black people in politics, you put yourself on the line. A good metaphor for this is when young David stepped up to fight against Goliath. King Saul chose him after he stepped up, mainly because nobody else did. King Saul conducted his evaluation of David after he stepped up. It is a prerequisite that all politicians step up. And it is also a prerequisite that the people evaluate politicians after they step up. But it is impossible for you to evaluate if you do not even know that they exist. The media is not going to always gift us with the convenience of putting these people in front of our living room sofa. They save that space for their collaborators. We must start thinking with logic. We must realize that we can win elections without mass white support. We must realize that black people have more numbers than what is accounted for. The last time that I was here on election day in 2020, I stated how the majority of black people do not take the census, do not take any polls or any other statistical metrical measuring of population forms. Many of you listening to me right now have whole families who never filled out any such forms ever in their lives, including yourself. It was the first time many of you ever heard a narrative like that. I would even say that most blacks 
who descended from American slaves never took these forms. We are not the majority, but our numbers have a political power pool that we underestimate significantly. There are even people who took the census forms who did not classify as black. And the reason why is because, it's, well, I said all of that. Uh, we already know about that. Okay, remember you heard this right here. Please share this video. That, that would be part of your contribution also. M more people must hear this. We all know that black, uh, uh, we all know that black person who may have someone in their ancestry who is of a different group. So they claim that they are either mixed or that or that specific group. Once black people find an incentive to actually get out and vote, we will swing the pendulum in a paradigm shift and we will see the actual numbers. OK, I said all of that. Uh, uh, I said all of that. I said all of that. Also, white people not have as big numbers as we think. I said all of that. So why does American government allow the under? OK, here we go. So why does the American government allow the under? representation of our population uh, size. So so what, you, what we have to understand, folks, is, is, is that this whole nation, this American white people got their independence because of taxation without representation. A whole war was fought. The Revolutionary War was fought over taxation without representation. They constructed a whole constitution, bloodshed, Buildings burning, cannonballs firing because of taxation without representation. So you mean to tell me that we can have an American government who understands that they can ha not have any power if they don't have any representation? How are we going to allow hundreds of years of no representation, no real representation except for black political tokenized politicians in American infrastructure in politics. That right there, uh, my folks, is a violation of the Constitution in itself. We, But there's no enforcement of that. If there are laws constructed without enforcement, guess what? The law don't exist. It might as well just don't exist, right? I mean, so the violation. You go to war over the shit, over yes, not having yes. representation. They was ready to go to war. They were, yes. We're yes. not. <laughs> yes. So you mean to tell me that we have black grassroots candidates right now? And I'm not going to mention nobody's names <laughs> on this podcast, but you, you, you have prominent individuals, individuals speaking against people who are standing up and actually going against the white supremacist system in American politics and don't even have a solution, really. Don't even have a solution. <laughs> and, 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 and every country in, in the world understands that you must have representation in your politics. And some, some countries... Uh, we put Obama in office both times and he only did things for LGBT and cops. Yes. Yes. We never had representation. This is something that we should give give a, 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 a try. Tax, we are being taxed without representation. That is a violation of the Constitution. 